Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. This is a three-part video series about tiny house tools, basically. Things that you need for your tiny house build. If you didn't watch part one where I went over what I consider the most essential tool, the pouches or tool belt, uh, the link for that will be in the description below. And part three, which I haven't filmed yet, but the specialty tools, things that you don't really need but help projects go a lot smoother and you end up with a better quality. The link for both those will be down in the description below, so be sure to check them out. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the most essential tools that I personally feel you should have for building a tiny house. Now you could get away with building a tiny house with a hammer, a handsaw, and a couple packs of sandpaper possibly. You may not even need the sandpaper, screw that. These two tools is really all you need to build a tiny house. But adding power tools to your project is gonna make things go a lot smoother and your overall quality is gonna be a lot better. So I'm gonna start out with what I feel is the most important tool and work my way down to the the not so important, but still uh, possibly a necessity when you're building your tiny house. So the first tool that I feel that you should spare no expense on is a circular saw. Now there are several different styles of circular saws. There's a worm drive circular saw and there's this style right here. I don't even know what it's called because this is all I've ever used. It's called a circular saw. But a worm drive saw, generally, I've worked with people from all over the US. Generally a worm drive saw is gonna be out west. I'm from New England and this is what I've always used, just a regular circular saw. Uh, in fact, you can't even find a worm drive saw at a big box store in, uh, on the East Coast. Now this is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw. Uh, basically that blade is seven and a quarter inches. I believe there is 24 teeth on it. It's an all around, all purpose blade for this saw. If you were gonna do some fine work, I would recommend more teeth on the blade. So on the saw, the first thing you'll notice is this thing right here. This is the blade safety or blade guard. It drops automatically down. If your saw gets jammed up with some stuff and this sticks, fix it right away. I've only cut myself once with this saw and that was because the blade guard stuck and I put it down on my leg and I cut into my leg. Small cut, but definitely uh, the best safety feature that this saw has. Now this thing will also cut in angles so you can lift this little lever on the front and you can adjust this right here so that you get different angles and the angle readout is right on here so you would just line this angle indicator up with the angle that you want and lock it into place and it would cut the angle on the front of the circular saw you'll see these little dips in it i dropped this thing a hundred times so it's damaged there most circular saws are going to have this mark the first one right here would be zero so this would be in line with the blade so when you start your cut you want to kind of sight this with your mark, bring this on your mark and then bring the blade to it. This other indentation would be when you set it to a 45 degree mark. Why won't it go? Another thing on this saw is a, a depth gauge. So you can unscrew this right here and then the bottom of the saw will adjust to go to the right depth. And there is markings on this thing right here that line up to an arrow so you can set your depth to the correct depth so you're not overcutting what you need to cut. Pretty much all saws are gonna have a little button right here. This button is to lock the blade into place. And that way you can hook a wrench to this and take the blade off. Now like I said, this should be your number one purchase. So spare no expense on this. This is gonna make a majority of your house. This is going to help you so much on your house. So don't buy a $50 circular saw. Do not buy a Black & Decker. Do not buy a Ryobi. Uh, personally, I would stay away from Cobalt and Rigid. I know some people are going to get offended, but Rigid, Rigid is a plumber's tool, okay? It's not a carpenter's tool. They're, they're working on it, but I, I wasn't a fan with their products that they had. Uh, I would go with a DeWalt, Milwaukee, possibly Porter Cable, and there's a couple other big name brands. You should look to spend around $120 to $180 on a good circular saw. The more you're gonna spend, the better of a quality you're gonna get. So this saw that I use and would highly recommend is a DW369. Uh, simple Google search, you'll find that baby. I think it's uh, around 129, 139, something like that. I swear by this saw, this thing is great. I once went and helped a, another couple build a tiny house and I showed up and I left my tools at my house and I went there figuring that they had stuff to, to do the job and they pulled out a Black & Decker circular saw. That saw will do the job that you need it to do, 
but t personally they're dangerous because they're they're not built to the quality that these these nicer saws are made at their 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 standards for quality is just crappy i would just i can't preach it enough to stay away from that bargain bin crap all right, moving on. So the next, what I would consider is the second most important tool, the tool that's gonna make you work efficiently and make your quality go up is a nail gun. Uh, now, nail guns are extremely expensive. Again, you could spend from 150 to $400 on a nail gun. This nail gun right here is about $350. Now, this is professional grade, like all this stuff, so it, it's gonna be a better quality than your, your DIY homeowner or like uh, Harbor Freight. It, it's going to be a lot better than stuff you would find there. This is a Hitachi NB83A2. And I'm not sure if they still make this. So this is a very versatile tool. This thing will shoot two inch nails, which would be something like that. These are ring shank galvanized. These can be used for trimming uh, fascias, trimming the outside of your house, trimming windows. These are a galvanized nail. There is a larger head on it but it's something that if you set the, the depth on this thing, it'll shoot the nail in and then you can fill the hole and paint over it. It'll shoot those as well as these, which are three and a quarter inches. And these are what framed most of my tiny house. These are just a smooth shank, nothing special about them, but general all around framing nail for uh, non-exterior. These are not galvanized, so you wouldn't want to use these uh, if they're gonna be exposed to weather. This thing has an adjustable plate right here that comes up and down and you can put different size nails in it. Also on most nail guns there's going to be uh, some type of depth adjustment. This one has a little thing where you twist it and this is going to set the depth so it doesn't shoot it too far in. You can also change the uh, PSI on your air compressor so it doesn't shoot it as hard but generally I would just mess with this depth adjuster. Most good quality nail guns are going to have something like this. Now this is also a coil nailer, so the nails are in a coil. If you go to the big box store, you probably won't see a framing nail coiled gun. This is a special order item. They do sell a strip nailer. Basically you have a, uh, you know, something like this, just a set of nails that are glued together like this. Sometimes there's little plastic, they basically melt plastic and form the nails together. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. This right here is over 250 nails right here, where a strip is only gonna have about 40 to 50 nails. So you're gonna be reloading the gun way more than with a coil nailer. Also another drawback with the strip nailer is when it's, when the nails are fastened together with plastic, when you shoot that nail gun, those plastic chunks come flying off. Now you've seen me not wear safety glasses when using this gun. It's because I've shot millions of nails out of this thing. But with the plastic one, I would definitely wear eye protection because those little plastic chunks come flying out of there at 100 miles an hour and they do hit you in the eye and they hurt. Definitely a fan of the coil nailer. All around, most versatile nail gun that you could buy. So that's, that's that. Now obviously if you're going to use a nail gun, you need an air compressor. Now this right here is the DeWalt M-Glow air compressor. Uh, I bought this thing almost 10 years ago at... $350. It was an extremely expensive purchase, but it's lasted me 10 years. Uh, I used it not on a regular basis, but I've used it a lot. It's gone through its, its paces, and it's amazing that it's still living. I'm Every day I turn it on, I'm waiting for it to just like shit out on me. So these are two options that you could get. There are Bostitch and Porter Cable uh, air compressor combo kits. So you're getting uh, two trim guns as well as a little stapler for under $200. So both those compressors will run a framing nailer as well as those trim guns that you get with it. If this thing dies out on me, I'm going to go and buy one of those too because it's a great deal and it'll do pretty much everything you need it to do. When, when you start getting up with the bigger tanks, that's more for mechanical work. When you use pneumatic tools and you need a lot of air, uh, Generally for nailing, you're not going to need as much supply of the air. Uh, 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 one of those compressors will keep up with the, uh, the nail gun. And if it doesn't, you just take a break for 30 seconds and the air will catch up to it. Now to feed the gun from the air compressor, you need an air hose. This is a quarter inch polyethylene air hose. Uh, it's only 50 feet. I was trying to find a 100 footer, but I couldn't figure, I couldn't find one. Uh, I do own a 100 footer 
from Hitachi that I bought at big box store and it got dry rot and it has more leaks in it than you can imagine. So my compressor always kicks on. That's why I purchased this. This thing was only like $12. So a good deal. I bought it on Amazon. It shoot, it'll hold up to 200 PSI, which you should never be over 200 PSI. Generally you stay around 120 PSI when you're shooting a nail gun. So for, for my needs, a 50 footer should be good enough. I would stay away from the half inch rubber hose and I would even stay away from the half inch polyethylene air hoses. They're too thick, they're hard to maneuver. A uh, quarter inch is definitely good enough for, for the needs that you'll have. So I've put a lot of thought into this video to make sure that I get all the correct tools that I think everyone should have to build a tiny house. So my next tool, and I know this is where people are going to start disagreeing with what I have to say, but a drill and not a cordless drill. I want a corded drill, something with a high torque, different settings on it. So there's a one and two speed on this thing. It does regular drilling and it also does hammer drilling. All around this thing is going to do everything you need to do. It's strong. It will drive huge screws. It'll drive little screws. This will come in handy when you're doing your electrical, your plumbing as well as possibly drilling through metal. This is a Porter Cable 70THD, maybe $89 I spent on this thing, but I bought this basically right at the beginning of my build. Now, I do own cordless drills, but uh, I would stay away from cordless tools until you've established good corded tools because uh, cordless are gonna go down on you, the batteries are gonna die, and you're gonna be you're going to be out of luck because you won't have what you need when you need it. So a good high torque drill, something along the lines of this right here. You ready for another one that's going to piss you off? I'm sure. So this next one I was kind of on the fence about. There's two different styles of this saw. They both have their place where you would use them. Uh, and I kind of lean towards the lesser of the two because it's more versatile than the other one but a, uh, a reciprocating saw, basically a saw that has a blade that just comes in and out. Better known as a Sawzall. Milwaukee makes a Sawzall, but this is a reciprocating saw. The blade just goes in and out, and it also has like an oval type pattern on it. But basically that oval type pattern is gonna be a stronger cutting saw. I, I, you know, I'm on the fence about this tool, if you should buy this one versus a jigsaw. This is also a reciprocating saw. This is going to be better used for your trim when you're doing interior stuff. So this is if you make like a major mistake when you're framing, but this would be better off for when you're doing the trim work inside your house. If you need to cut a little box around your outlets, if you need to cut an outlet or a hole in your ceiling for a light, this is going to be a better tool for that. So which one do you get? If you can afford both, I would get both. Not really needed more needed than this so i would go with a good name brand jigsaw stay away from can you guess black and decker and ryobi yes do not buy them those are homeowner grade tools now most jigsaws are going to have an adjustable plate on the bottom so i can turn this and i can cut on different angles there's also a speed adjustment on this thing, so if I need to cut slower or faster, I can. Uh, you can get multiple different types of blades for this thing. You can cut metal with it, you can cut uh, wood with it, and you can cut different types of wood. So if you have a hardwood, you can get a different type of blade. I do have a large box with 30 or 40 different types of blades in it, so that whatever I'm cutting, I have a blade for it. A jigsaw was the first tool that I ever owned. I was probably like 10 or 12 years old and my mom bought me a jigsaw. And definitely a semi-safe tool to use. If you cut yourself with a jigsaw, don't ever touch another tool again in your life. Just, just throw in the towel, give up. If you've been watching my build for the last few months, you know that I did utilize this tool a lot. It is a, it's a mistake fixer for framing. It's also a plumber's friend and an electrician's friend. All three of those contractors are gonna carry this tool with them. Uh, but for the tiny house, I would, I would lean more towards a jigsaw. Oh, I'm pissing people off. I can hear it. Stop typing, stop. So when I framed professionally, those were basically the main tools that I used. Uh, there was other tools that I incorporated into our projects that we did to make the product better. 
but that was basically everything that we used on a daily basis. Since I've started doing my tiny house, I've realized that this tool right here, a uh, right angle grinder, has been invaluable. I have used this thing on many, many projects. You can put many different types of blades on this thing. You can cut metal with it. You can grind metal with it. You can cut tile. You can do a lot of stuff with this thing. Now there is a safety that goes around this thing. I took it off because I cut in multiple directions and you know my, my feelings on safety. But anytime I run into something metal that I need to cut, this thing will do it. Uh, with my, my new Tiny House Terry 2.0, I use this thing like crazy to grind stuff off and cut stuff off. So I think this tool is uh, one to add to this video because it's something that I use quite often. Now the last power tool that I'm going to add to this, which was kind of a last minute thing, is a sander. An orbital sander I think is the most versatile uh, sander that you can get. I do own a belt sander which is an extremely aggressive sanding tool, but just a basic orbital sander is, is basically all you need. I have several different packs of sandpaper, 80, 120, 220, and uh, I believe there's 320 as well. But I have all those on hand, so when I need to sand something, I have it. This this right here is one of those things that's going to up your quality. It's not a necessity. I would focus more on the original tools that I just showed you, more than this right here. Now that's basically it for power tools that I think are very essential to building your tiny house. Now going back to kind of hand tools, this is a framing square. Uh, this is going to help figure your rafters. It's going to help you with making the lines that go on your floor or your trailer and making sure every all the lines that you snap on your trailer are perfectly square. Uh, this is going to help you with a lot of different things. I have several videos where I talk about this tool and how to use it. Uh, I won't link it down below. Just go down into my videos and just start looking. Just start watching. There is plenty of videos where I use this thing and it's, uh, it's a very helpful tool, especially when it comes to figuring rafters. One thing I didn't go over in the last video with the speed square is that this thing can do angles on it. There's a pivot point on this top corner right here and there's angle numbers all across the bottom. Now this isn't going to be as accurate as a framing square, so I would, I would recommend buying something like this at $10 to $20. Now these last two items, I wasn't really sure how to add them into this. Uh, I really wanted to pick one over the other, but a ladder. Um, this right here is an extension ladder. It starts, you, you can get these things in multiple different lengths and qualities basically, but you can get a cheap one for about $40 that starts out at like 12 feet or 10 feet and it'll extend all the way up to 18 to 20 feet. So this will help you do basically the whole exterior of your tiny house. Now when you get onto the interior, you can't use that extension ladder, so you need a step ladder. Personally, I think a six to eight foot step ladder would be good. Now these are things that a lot of homeowners own, so you might not need to buy those or and even these tools right here. Your friends, family, neighbors, they might have these things laying around that you could, uh, you could borrow. Don't think that you need to buy all these things to make your tiny house. You can also rent these tools. Uh, I, I would stay away from renting because you're gonna need them for many days and just to rent a saw or a gun from big box stores is gonna cost quite a significant amount of money. You might as well just invest in it. You will get your money back on a nail gun and a circular saw for sure. So another great place to look for power tools is tag sales. Uh, there's people always selling stuff in tag sales and generally it's a pretty decent quality. I would also look at pawn shops. Pawn shops are a great place for power tools. Contractors are always selling their tools to uh, pawn stores and that's the one place where you could uh, negotiate a little bit with the seller. Um, haggle a little bit, try to get the best deal for a saw. Before you buy something, get on your smartphone, Google it, see what the actual price is and I would start right around 50% of what the actual cost is when it's brand new. Uh, I expect to pay around 60 to 75% of that actual cost though. If you were to go to a big box store and buy these things outright, you're looking at about $1,000. So uh, if, if it's something that you enjoy doing like I do, then I would recommend going and investing in uh, a good set of professional grade tools, the most important tool. I can't stress that enough. But I hope this video was helpful to you. It was probably my number one suggested video for this, this thing right here that I'm doing. If you have other questions about 
other aspects of building a tiny house, throw them down in that description below and I will do future videos trying to answer those questions and help you guys with your builds as well. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I put out videos once or twice a week. Depends on what I'm feeling like. Who knows where that's going. Also, I am doing a second tiny house build right now that I recently started. Uh, if you'd like to become a part of that and help support it, I have a Patreon page. The link's going to be in the description below. For just $1 a month, you'll get advanced access to all my content, as well as some behind-the-scenes, just-for-you videos that are only going to be on Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing those and and watching videos before they are released on YouTube, which is generally about a month and a half, uh, check it out. Link in the description. Just $1. Small coffee. Just a little coffee for you to drink. That's it. Just a little one. That would be great. Don't forget to leave your great knowledge down below. And if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And as always, I will see you on the next video. That was a pretty PG video.